Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin the Food Entrepreneur Show. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I Z Z A R R O. For anyone who's out there, you can find us on Instagram at Justin the Food Entrepreneurs, or you can listen to us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. So I'm going to jump right into it. So I have Jamie Joe and Craig Joe of the Tennessee Cobbler Company out of Nashville, Tennessee. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? We're good. How are you? I'm very good. So Let's get down to the dirty, dirty, in the dirty, I guess, south. And um, let's talk about your story. How'd you guys start a business? Like, okay, actually, let's rewind back. Each of you, like, did you grow up in an entrepreneurial family? Did you grow up in food? How did this sort of come together, your owning of two food trucks? Um, Yeah, so for me first, um, I did not necessarily grow up in an entrepreneurial family. Um, All my family worked for other entities. However, they were a very um, involved family. They did a lot of their orchestrating and organizing and leadership uh, through like the nonprofit sector. So I did grow up in a very um, leadership charged family, I guess you could say, but not necessarily someone that took on their own business. And then for Craig, Um, my dad, I grew up in the restaurant industry so I, I was born and raised in the restaurant so my dad had a Chinese restaurant in Memphis Tennessee um, and that's that's where I got my entrepreneurship I guess <laughs> we started in the restaurant business that way so talk to me about how you know where did this you know what was the journey to get food trucks off the ground did you guys go to school culinary school how did this sort of your pathways come together to form this partnership to, to actually do cobbler? Yeah. So we, um, both, we met at a restaurant here in Nashville. Um, when I had just moved to Nashville, I, I needed a job and, um, I had been in the service industry for many years. So I was like, well, I'll wait tables. So I went downtown and got hired at a local restaurant and Craig was actually the first person that I met, um, on my training shift. And then, um, two years later we ended up getting married and at our wedding, um, myself, my mom, my aunt, we got together and cooked a lot of my grandmother's like old fashioned recipes. And instead we had a wedding cake, but instead of like focusing on the wedding cakes, we actually did like an old fashioned dessert table that had all these recipes, excuse me, these recipes featured. And then I had all of her handwritten recipes in picture frames. And that was part of my decor at our wedding reception. Um, and after that, like people loved it. It was just such a hit. Like people still talk about our wedding reception and, the recipes and the dessert table. So fo- immediately following that, when, when we were working together at the restaurant, we wanted to own a food truck. We wanted to do something different. Um, and I love to bake and Craig wanted a food truck and so just kind of was like, Hey, this is a perfect pairing. Um, there's not really any other food trucks, um, in, you know, this there's dessert trucks and sweet trucks, but there wasn't one in the space of cobbler. And that was something that we just thought was easy. And it was very Southern nostalgia, um, that people would love. And so we gave it a shot and it worked. This is really cool. So Craig, tell me how did, would, like where you just wanted a food truck at just for the sake of a food truck or tell me about like, did you always uh, coming in the restaurant business want your own food business? Well, I, being in the restaurant industry, like I guess originally like, um, seeing all, I, I traveled to LA a lot. I had family out there and they all had food trucks out there and the Kogi truck was really popular and just that food scene was really awesome. And I always thought it would be awesome to just be, in a food truck, just making your own like way in life, I guess uh, if, if you could say it like that, but like just being an entrepreneur and being in control of your own schedule and kind of controlling every aspect of the business and just, just on wheels. So I thought that was really awesome. Well, let's talk about the cobblers that you guys have. What, like, I don't even know how many cobblers there possibly are in the world, but let's talk about, you said 17 before we got on here, I'm pretty sure. And so Uh, we're going to talk about about 17 or 18 different flavors. Yeah, let's talk about them. So, what are those flavors? So, we have classic peach, of course. Classic peach is the most popular. We have caramel apple, Nashville hot honey apple. That's our top seller right now. We have a honey apple pecan, chocolate cobbler, blueberry, blackberry, strawberry, cherry, 
the, the list is endless. We have a Titan Berry Cobbler that we named, of course, for our Tennessee Titans. We have a Smash Berry Cobbler we named for our Preds, and that one's a Blueberry Lemon. The Titan Berry is a mixed berry. It's got blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries in it. Um, we have a cranberry pear that we're working on we have a pistachio pear so there's just any any type of fruit pretty much you can make a cobbler out of we even do a sweet potato cobbler around thanksgiving it's very cool so how long ago did you start this venture Uh, we started in 2016 and we bought our truck and we did like pop-ups here and there but we we were building out the truck ourselves so it took us a couple years to get it like road ready um and so we officially launched the truck in 2018 okay so this is interesting so it's like nashville is just starting to boom by then i believe i mean you're starting to get the everyone's in the gulch so you're ahead of that so that must have been a good curve so how did you get business up until COVID, how did you get business during COVID and how do you get business now? Talk to me about those weird transitions because you've obviously had a pivot. Also amongst all of it, you've gained another truck. So you're doing something right here. So let's talk about like how you did that. Yeah, so when we first started, um, it was obviously we got business through family and friends and, and we did work together still at that restaurant downtown Nashville. It was a really popular restaurant, had a large staff. So we would always like test recipes, of course, on our coworkers um, and just hear like word of mouth events. And and Nashville has no shortage of events. You know, of course, there's always a music festival or uh, movies in the park or something going on. So we would hear about those types of events and we would try to go um, and participate. And then um, my family also back home in Florida, they have large cookouts that they host every year around um, New Year's and the 4th of July. So I remember we did a pop-up at one of the cookouts. There was a couple hundred people there and we just brought cobbler and ice cream. And like we had comment cards that we asked all the people at the cookout to give us feedback, you know, too sweet, not sweet enough. Um, you know, the texture, like everything. We had all these comment cards that came back to us and kind of helped us like hone our recipes. So that was leading up to us launching the truck. And then when we first, I remember our first event on the food truck, um, we happened to meet someone that was a member of the National Food Truck Association at that event. And they introduced us to several other people and just said, you know, this is who the pe- these are the people you need to contact um, to get events. And it just kind of snowballed from there. So it was like a word of mouth, like networking, um, meeting people. And then the next thing you know, um, you know, fast forward. Yeah. I mean, during COVID, we actually got laid off from our restaurant, uh, job. restaurant job. So that kind of forced us to do the food truck full time because we were doing it part time, like on the weekends, like weddings and Mm-hmm. Um, little events but during the week we were still at the restaurant so when we got fired from there we got laid off we, we didn't get fired when we got laid off from there we kind of it was almost a blessing in disguise that forced us to do it full-time and yeah. we found out we could do it full-time yeah so. 2020 was definitely um obviously it was a terrible year for so many reasons um but as far as from a food trucking perspective that was a great year because we are to go food right we are essentially um what everyone was looking for during that time when all the restaurants closed down and people couldn't go anywhere we could go to them we could take pre-orders online so there was you know no cash handling no face-to-face greeting it was pre-order online We'll bag your stuff up, set it on the ledge. You can come to the truck and pick it up at the front of your neighborhood, go back home. Um, it was really interesting to how all the Nashville trucks, I remember we had a meeting mm-hmm. and, and they called everybody together and we just said, what are we going to do? It's time to pivot. This is about to get crazy. And everyone just said, you know, neighborhoods, like go to the neighborhoods. Um, and oddly enough, I don't really know why we weren't doing that always but it just during COVID it was just like get to the neighborhoods and serve people um and it worked and that allowed us to you know realize okay we can do this full time obviously you know now that things have calmed down with COVID that has changed somewhat um neighborhoods are not necessarily a popular spot anymore um well there's but they're more, still there more option I, everybody's going to restaurants and stuff now. yeah the restaurants aren't closed so it was kind of a we were kind of pigeonholed into that little. Yeah, during that year, it was definitely like neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods. Um, and then after that settled off, 
now there's just a plethora of events again and things that we can attend and participate in. Um, and now that we, ha- you know, we have our second truck, it's permanently parked on 12 South. It's, um, it's not mobile necessarily. So, I mean, it stays there. We have a little patio and outdoor seating space, but our other truck is fully booked. So we stay busy with that one. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a roller coaster of pivots. Um, but all those steps have led us to where we are and allowed us to see that we can do this. How'd you find the second spot for the truck and stuff? I mean, it's a permanent location. That's even better. I'm not sure where on 12th it is. Again, I'm still yeah. not getting familiar with Nashville, I guess. Yeah, so we're located at 2808 12th Avenue South. We are right between King Baby and the bike shop. So we're just down from Edley's Barbecue on 12th South. Um, and they, uh, the person that owns that property actually reached out to us. They were looking um, for a food truck. And at the time, um, I just, they, they just reached out and said, you know, Hey, we want to give this a shot. Would you guys be interested? So we met with them and we talked about it and they actually ended up going with a different truck, um, and told us that they were just going to give it a shot with someone else. So uh, fast forward a few months later, I guess that, that just didn't work out necessarily. So they called us back and said, okay, come back. We want to try you guys. Um, and our agreement was that's fine, but we didn't just want to be, like a truck parked on the side of the road. We really wanted to become part of the neighborhood. And um, so we, you know, requested that we be allowed to put down turf and gravel and plant flowers and really like beautify the space because it's really just a small strip um, next to an alleyway there. So there was like trash cans and all these things scattered about. And we just didn't want to be, you know, just we didn't a- want to just like roll in every day and then hoping to sell and then leave. Like, we want to be part of the neighborhood. Yeah, we visually wanted to really become a part of that landscape over there. And so I think that's helped us um, tremendously, for sure. We get lots of compliments on the little patio area with the picnic tables and the umbrellas. And and also, I think our neighbors appreciated it because, you know, 12 South is a very elevated neighborhood. It's full of, like, boutiques and shopping and tons of tourists come through there. And that's always a fear when a new business comes in or anybody, you know, to the neighborhood. How are they going to respect our space? And I think that's really helped us um, because cosmetically, it really fits in well over there. And people have appreciated that we've sort of renovated and revitalized this little alleyway um, to help become part of the 12 South landscape. It's very cool. Okay, so let's talk about the most popular items. You said you have um, the hot hot honey one was the hot honey apple was one of the most popular ones. But let's talk about what are the most popular right now. Do they differ by store versus, I mean, by um, permanent location versus, I guess, portable location? Um. I don't think so. I think they're all pretty much across the board. That Nashville hot honey, I mean, you know, if... If you've been in Nashville very long, you know everything around here is popular when you put Nashville hot in front of it. People love to try the Nashville spice. Um, And this Nashville hot honey apple is amazing for that. It's just the perfect balance of sweet and spicy. And I think it it allows people to try that Nashville hot um, idea. But it's also not like hot chicken where your mouth is going to be on fire. It's like (laughs) the perfect balance of sweet and spicy and, and, and people can enjoy their food and not have to worry about their mouth going numb. So I think it's fun for people to be able to say they tried something that was Nashville hot, but a different take on it, not necessarily hot chicken. Um, I think both trucks, the Nashville hot honeys yeah, is definitely popular. Cobbler and ice cream in general yeah. is our main thing. The shakes are really good. Like we blend the cobbler into shakes and that's really awesome. But like the, the banana thing. pudding shake is <clears throat> the most popular shake that we yeah. have. Um, but the cobbler and ice cream is definitely where it's at. That's what most people come to us for. And I think classic peach is the number one seller, but that's just by default. People are, they know peach cobbler. They're comfortable with peach cobbler. Um, and then that hot honey apple is right behind that. So talk to me a little bit about what has been the hardest thing about doing the food truck. You guys are obviously a couple um, so there's a lot of, you know, business pleasure that's mixed in there. So we can talk about how that dynamic works at some point, because it's got to be different. You're also working together all the time um, and you're you're trying to run a business together. So there's obviously that. But also, like, what has been the best time, you know, what have been some of the hardest time, the lessons learned? Well, I think 
for starters, on the relationship dynamic, when we worked at the restaurant um, downtown, like I said, that's where we met. So we had been working together before we ever even became a couple. Um, but once we had become a couple, the restaurant was quite large and they had like large party sections where big groups of people would come in and you would have two servers that had to work together in that section all night. Um, and once we were married, especially, you know, they would just put us together in the same section every night. So we, we've worked together for years, um, before we even owned a food truck. Now I will say it definitely changes once you get married and then, um, you know, I joke with people all the time. I'm like, yeah, why don't you jump in the back of a 15 foot hot box with your spouse for 12 hours a day and see how, <laughs> how much you like it. Um, but we've made it work. We, I mean, I think there's a lot of comic relief to it sometimes Like we, we have the same fears. We have the same excitements. We have the same, you know, aggravations. Um, and, and we know each other well enough now to know that like, okay, when I push him to a certain point, he knows he's just going to step off the truck and take a breather. I'm going to walk away, like whatever it may be that we need to do to, to fix the situation. Um, if we're overworked and we're tired and we're short fused at the moment, we know each other well enough to know our limits. And so it's good to be able to like step away. Um, I think the only other downside would be that because we know each other's limits, <laughs> we can push them a little bit farther <laughs> than if we were not engaged in a relationship. If we were just like coworkers, um, I think sometimes we, we might take advantage of the fact that like, you know, I know what buttons to push, you know what buttons <laughs> to push. Um, but it's, it's not been, that it's not been bad. It's I mean, not, it's not been bad. It's we just have to sense. It's, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to separate. I guess just bringing it like knowing when to get, we go to the park and take a walk with our dog and, yeah. and like just separate and like turn, turn it off, turn business <laughs> off, and yeah. then just ha knowing when to do that. I think for a while too, we had part of the business in our home. I mean, yeah. we have an office space now, but in that office, what is currently the office in our home now, at one point we stored a lot of our food truck supplies, like not food or anything, but like the dry goods, you know, whether it be napkins and bowls and cups and trash bags, just things that go on the truck. We needed them in a storage space and that became our home. And I think seeing that all the time and, and it never being able to be separated was becoming something that we both recognized was like, this is a headache. We need to get this out of here so that home is home and work is work. Um, and that's helped a lot, I yeah, think. So, helped a lot. but turning it off sometimes is difficult because that's our livelihood. So even if you, you know, if you worked a corporate job and you came home and talked to your spouse about your day at work, we do the same thing. It's just that we were together all day at work. <laughs> so we know exactly what happened. And that conversation just sometimes can seep into um, home life. Um, and then I forget, I apologize. I forget what the second part that you asked us. No. So, um, what was, you know, what are some of the lessons learned? What are some of the hardships you faced on the truck? Like maybe entrepreneurial lessons, food lessons, things like that. Craig, uh, I'll let you tell about that. <laughs> we just have to learn to roll with a bunch of like our first, one of our first, um, gigs was probably the most challenging, um, it was a really high profile client in downtown Nashville at the Ryman Auditorium. And oh, <laughs> um, this is one of our first and biggest gigs and the truck broke down on the way, like rolling in. It was also the storming. It, like, was it was storming. also probably yeah. like the worst flood I've <clears throat> ever seen. I mean, it was and down. We worse. had to get like five or six guys to push our truck into the spot so we could serve. And then, figure out how to get out of there after the gig was over. It was, it was crazy. It was very embarrassing, but, <laughs> but the client was happy in the end, everyone was served. And so I think embarrassing. Yes. Um, lesson learned. Yes. Um, but there's always something broken on a food truck. Yeah, I think that's something. one of the biggest things. Always. That's a, just a, not a disadvantage, but you know, it's just constantly something that has to be worried about is maintenance on a, on a truck. Mm -hmm. Um, and the engine can be working fine. Um, but something go down in the kitchen. So you still can't serve or something's wrong with the engine and your kitchen be fine, but you can't get to the event to serve because there's something wrong with the engine. So there's a little bit of um, headache involved when you're running a mobile business for sure. But um, I can't think of that's, that's the biggest thing yeah. basically. Um, 
but that's also the joy of it, right? Is that it's <laughs> mobile. And so we can come and go as we please and move around different experiences every day. So I think that's one of the biggest blessings and curses as far as a mobile business. Do you like living in Nashville and doing this? Do you find that this is the right market for what you guys are doing? I definitely think it's the right market for what we're doing. Um, I don't think, you know, this wouldn't, I don't think cobbler and ice cream would be a hit in like Wisconsin or, you know, like I think it's definitely a Southern treat, but it's very Nashville and people visit Nashville to get a taste of the South and all those things that they envision Nashville to be. Um, and so I think that's been yeah, I think it fits. smart. I think it fits. <clears throat> yeah. It's well. It fits well in the in the shtick of Nashville. And we love Nashville. I know Jamie's from Florida. She her heart belongs in <laughs> North Florida, but um, Nash- Nashville's also become our home because I'm from Memphis originally. So, yeah. um, we're both a little bit of transplants, but yeah. we love Nashville. Well, it's a good city to be in with a restaurant right now or food trucks because that city is booming. It's unbelievable how big Nashville is getting. I mean, just the time I've spent there, it's just unbelievable how big it's getting. It's kind of cool. It's grown tremendously since I've been here. I was here, in, I got here in 2012, and it's insane. I mean, the changes are just That's unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah, it's just, it's a New York City meets Los Angeles. I keep telling everyone, it's like the city itself can't grow anywhere, so it's going up. But then there's like the suburbs and stuff that are like the Beverly Hills going to be or even areas that are a little less than Beverly Hills, <laughs> like yeah. Compton. So there's things like that. So it's all like relative, but and you have all the universities there, which is kind of crazy in colleges, like in a very yeah, close vicinity. Yeah. yeah. So how do you come up with new recipes? How do you how do you come up with new things to keep things exciting do you, are you stuck in the ones that you have right now talk to me a little bit about that um so i think with new recipes we try to keep it simple cobbler's not a very complex and we try dish. to keep it seasonal as well yeah like, like seasonal flavors so coming up with the new recipes though <clears throat> is is something that if we have an idea that something inspires us, maybe we have dinner somewhere and we have a new flavor of something else that we're like, Ooh, I wonder if you can make that into a cobbler. And so we'll just try it out at home and we'll, you know, test it on friends and family and things like that. Um, but like Craig said, seasonally is the way that we keep things new and exciting. I think is that, you know, we run a spring and summer menu and then we switch over to the fall menu. Um, and then, you know, we're back again in a few months to the spring and summer. So it, there's not much monotony there. It, it continues to roll. What's the biggest event you guys have done? Biggest? Well, I, I think. I'm just trying to imagine. The NFL like, draft. Go ahead. Yeah. The NFL draft was probably the largest crowd. Yeah. That was that was massive. Um and then every we've done CMA Fest as well. Yeah, our... CMA Fest every year. Um and then rivaling that, honestly, as far as well, as far as busyness, um and like single day like financial gains, I would say, is the Kentucky State Food Truck Championship. Yeah. That one um is an intense day of food trucking. This is all day all day. Non stop. Non stop, yeah. <laughs> That, Explain that, to me that what that free. is, because it sounds like like the battle of the food trucks. It got a little bit. Um, <laughs> we we actually got contacted by them. They're, it's like through their chamber of commerce or something. Um, like so yeah, the Rock Castle Chamber of Commerce or Division of Tourism in Kentucky, they decided two years ago to host a Kentucky State Food Truck Championship um, as a, as a fundraiser. And so they were reaching out to food trucks, just trying to get people to come and we weren't going to do it because it wasn't Kentucky. Um, and we were like, Oh, well, you know, we're the Tennessee like cobbler company. Yeah. It's about three hours in a car, and about four hours in a food truck. So, um, That's at first we weren't going to do that, but they had a $5,000 prize cash prize <laughs> attached to it. So we were like, uh, let's just give it a shot. We'll give it a go. So the first year they had it was um, 2021 and we did it and we won <laughs> the grand prize. And it was awesome. We had a, the, I mean, that was the, one of the busiest days. I mean, we were slinging cobbler <laughs> like for hours. Um, it's from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. And their community just really showed up and just supported that event. Um, and then the next year we went back last year and we weren't eligible to compete again since we had won the year before, but we did participate 
And again, it was raining and like the line never stopped for hours from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, just one after another, um, people came out and supported that event. And, and that was interesting because it's really kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's it's out there. It's a very rural community um, and thousands of people showed up and just continued to support all these food trucks. So um, and that's a different group of food truckers, right? Because most of them are from Kentucky. We're the only Tennessee truck. I think there's one other Tennessee truck that I know of that competes in that. Um, and so, you know, we have our food truck and friends here in Nashville that we're always surrounded by, but it's interesting to be able to, you know, step into another world of food trucks and see the dynamic that they have too. But that event's always special every, every September. Um, but then locally, I would say CMA Fest is probably the big one for us every year. That's awesome. I love it. And so you guys have won a bunch of awards I saw on your Instagram. What other awards have you guys won? Let's see. We got the we got the championship uh, and we got the Williamson County Fair best dessert. Best dessert. Last year that was special. That was our first time at the fair. Um and we got voted best dessert. So that was a fun one. We got first runner up this year. Which uh, dessert won? Which dessert won the each one. Um, they didn't do a particular dessert. It was just like the best dessert option, I guess, the at the fair. fair. Yeah. So like cool. our truck in general just took um, the best dessert. And then we got second place this year in Best of Nashville um, for best dessert. And um, from the scene. Yeah, that was the na- hosted by the Nashville scene. So we got second place in that one, which is still like a lot of people are, oh, why are you celebrating second place? You didn't win. I'm like, yeah, but to be the second best dessert in all of Nashville, and we're a food truck, like, that's pretty special to us. So we took that as a huge compliment. Um, Generous Helpings. Um, second Harvest does a fundraiser every year called Generous Helpings with about 40 or 50 executive, executive chefs. chefs from, like, um, hotels and a restaurant, a restaurant groups. groups and all these places, and we got – we get second, second place, place there overall. this year. Yeah. Um, we got third place the first year we did it with our peach cobbler. And then this year we got second place with our Nashville hot honey apple. Um, and then, yeah, we had the pistachio pear as well. Um, but the hot honey apple was such a huge hit there. And again, when We're people are like, but savory trucks, I mean, not trucks, but savory food, That's executive it. chefs from all these restaurant groups and hotels, like, people that are classically trained and like all this stuff. And here we are with our little food truck and our cobbler and we're being voted, you know, in the top of these competitions that, you know, lets us know that we feel like we have something special here. Would you say like, that's like, what was the moment where you guys thought, okay, we might actually be successful at this? Like what day was it? Do you guys remember? Or do you remember a conversation that you guys had? And how do you define it? Um, you know, I don't remember one day. I think, I think like over the span of a few events and things where people just kept like, you know, you hear people talk. So we would be at an event and people would trickle in and out and buy the cobbler, but you would hear them walk away and go, Oh my God, this is so good. Oh, this is great. And then someone else would come up and say, Oh, I was told I had to try this cobbler. And then someone else would come. Oh, I was told that I had to try this. Oh, you guys are the talk of the event. Everyone says we have to try this cobbler. And so after a few times of hearing that, we're like, okay, people are enjoying this. And then people started saying things like, Oh my gosh, this reminds me of my grandmother. Oh my gosh, this took me back. This makes me feel like home. Oh my gosh. You know, all these sentiments that we thought were just really special, they never stopped. People continue to this day to come up and say, oh, I was told I had to try this, or um, this just really took me back to a special place in my life, growing up in the South, you know, or growing up even in the North and visiting my grandmother in the South, and um, she would make these berry cobblers, and so, like, being able to hone into those special memories for people, I think is something that never gets old, and then it's just obviously we're able to live our life through doing this. So we know that we're successful at it um, and we're still growing. And that's the other thing we haven't gotten to a stagnation point yet. Like we're still growing and adding, you know, the, the second truck this past year. And we have some other things in the works that we're doing. Um, we're, we're proud of that. I think that to me is the success is that we can still do this and make a living, but also that we're happy um, and that we provide happy for other people. I think that to me is probably how I would define success. 
I like it. So did you guys have mentors growing up, leaders that you looked up to, role models? Because you, this is quite bold what you guys are doing. So what what does that look like? Did you have were your parents? Like talk to me a little bit about the people that really had influence on you guys. I guess uh, for me, it would probably be my dad. My He owned a restaurant when I was like ever since I was born to about when I was eight. I guess he had a Chinese restaurant. So, I mean – just seeing him behind the scenes being on his back like him cooking and sweating and buying product and prepping and every day just trying to run that restaurant just showed me how much work was involved and then how much success you could have owning a your own business like that yeah i think for me probably my parents as well um they like i said they they were very involved parents so um, they were involved in the community in a multitude of aspects. My dad was fire chief for over 40 years. Um, you know, my mom, of course, is like the local Sunday school teacher. And they, they just always were doing something for others. And I think that gave me that like sentimental bug, if you will. Like I still I love stories. I love things that mean something. Um, I love helping other people and having like a servant's heart, I think, is where we both connected. Me and Craig, we both just love giving back. And so even from a business aspect, we've been able to give back, you know, to other organizations and things, whether we're donating our time following the tornadoes or um, the Nashville bombing that took place, we're able to give back in that capacity, but also just on a day-to-day level where we can give people those like special memories of, you know, maybe a time long ago that just for that split second when they're eating our food, it takes them back and they remember those happy memories. So I think that's, that's probably been the best for both of us. How do you source your stuff? Like, I mean, when you make it, do you, do you make it all from scratch? Do you cut the pears? Do you cut the stuff up to make your peach club? Talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, so all of our stuff is made from scratch. Um, we, I will, um, we do not, we, don't <laughs> cut our own we do fruit. not cut our own fruit. Um, we, it's, it's, I laugh because we started out like that. That's how we started. We were going to do everything from the farm straight to the table. We're going to, no, we don't have the capacity, the labor capacity so to do that. Problem. And we are so high volume that we just simply cannot do that. So we don't use, we use all of our, our peaches and stuff, our canned peaches. And to be able to do these year round, people don't understand that too. And they're like, well, why don't you use fresh peaches? I can't use fresh peaches in December. And so a lot of people still want peach cobbler in December. Um, And just the labor that's involved with something like that. We tried in the beginning and it was taking hours to prep this much fruit for the, for as much volume as we go through. We've, we've, gone through over 10,000 cobblers just this year cobbler like scoop like our bowls of cobbler that we serve people we've already gone through over 10,000 so just in 2023 since January so I think that's hard for people to to comprehend that we're that high volume but it really does take a lot of time to do that. And there's just the two of us. We do have two employees um, on our 12 South location right now. One of them has gone home for the summer. Um, and the other one is a, the daughter of a fellow food trucker that's helping us out. And so once we really get, you know, a staff built up, some things may change, but right now I think it's also hard for people to grasp that it's the two of us. <laughs> uh, I'm, like I grew up eating peach. The, how I ate peach cobbler was from a can, like, from can like we would make it in a dutch oven with canned peaches and throw a cake mix on top of it and that that's what i remember growing up people do yeah that's my peach cobbler memory so and then the the syrup actually helps the situation yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah definitely having that i mean like i said we tried at the beginning but um the consistency the consistency of the the mixes and stuff just it wasn't the same until we added that you know the syrup and things from like the canned fruit or the frozen berries and and sometimes we can't get our hands on even those you know sometimes people request like blackberry in the middle of a certain time of year and we we just can't find it at our supplier um but those things just they haven't made a difference and we really stress that to people I, i remember one time i had a peach farmer come up to the truck you know and he said oh do you use locally sourced peaches or do you and i said well you taste this and you tell me what you think um 
And he was like, oh, these are fresh peaches. I, I know I know my peaches, and these are fresh peaches. And I said, sir, those are from a can. Um, and, you know, he laughed, and he was like, oh, wow. He was, And I said, you know, by the time you season these things, you put all this stuff together, um, none of that really matters. Um, I said, but you have to understand where we're coming from with the, the capacity that we do. We just – we cannot keep up. Um, and so I don't think it's hindered our product at all. We make our own batter. The, the oh, yeah, of course. Batter. The batter and all that stuff is made from scratch, of course. Where can they find you online? Where can they order your product from? How do they find you guys? Uh, yeah, so our website is tncobblerco.com. Uh, and our Instagram is at tncobblerco. And our Facebook is backslash tncobblerco. So everything is TN Cobbler Co. Cool for Tennessee Cobbler yeah. Company. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you guys could share anything with anyone, like anyone starting off a food truck, anyone that's in a relationship or trying to start a business, anything, like could you each take some time and just like pass on wisdom that you think would help someone that was in your shoes, maybe where you were when you guys first started in 2016? This has got to be patient <laughs> as I, i'm the more patient of the two of us and i think we even each other out like we kind of balance each other out because jamie is very i wouldn't say like <laughs> you can say impatient i'm impatient i'm impatient she's a little impatient but i'm, I'm, I'm a little calmer and more patient and then she keeps me on my toes and I keep her on her toes, I think. He keeps my feet on the ground. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm definitely the more high strung of the two. And so I think that's finding a right balance. If you're in a relationship with someone that you work with is always um, key. And also turning it off, like coming home and home life is home life and work is work and trying to, you know, carve out that time for home life. That's that's the biggest struggle. And that's the most important thing to remember is that sometimes you have to turn that off. Don't worry about the emails. I mean, if I have a bad habit of, you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, we get an email and I start returning it. And I have to tell myself like, this is not normal business hours. Like, and that's just in general as a small business owner, you know, you wear so many hats that you feel like you have to do all these things all the time. And I think just carving out that time to say, you know what, this is not business hours. This can be returned tomorrow. Um, and, and keeping that separation is definitely key there. Um, I would also say, you can still find things to do in your business that are exciting, but aren't the humdrum, you know, same thing every day, day in and day out. We, you know, we wrote a children's book about our, our first truck, Sweet Loretta. So that gave us another creative outlet to be able to market the truck, but it was something totally different. Um, we've worked on legislation. We just recently got legislation passed for food truckers in Tennessee um, for a statewide fire permit. And that was another outlet like that I was able to work on because I have, you know, a heart for advocacy and fighting for small business owners. And so that's been something that we've been working hard on, but it was still in the realm of our business. It just wasn't baking cobbler, selling cobbler, you know, making shakes, driving the truck. It was a different form of um, supporting our business, but it gave us a, a different type of outlet. So I would say find those outlets that you can still support your business, but do it in a, a different way too. Absolutely. Where do you guys want to see this thing go? What are your dreams? How big? You know, what do you want this to do for you guys? Or, or is this too enough? Or talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, I think we day to day, we have a different vision, you know, ask me on a good day. And I'm like, we're going to conquer the world. <laughs> we're gonna have a million cowboy yeah. companies everywhere. But <laughs> and then ask me on a uh, middle of July on a day that we've been there for 12 hours and I'm like, this is it. I'm shutting the doors. I don't ever want to do this again. You know, it just, you, you tarry from day to day, but I think in, I think we're, we're growing slowly. We're definitely not like you see that often where things are successful, especially truckers and they want to go into a brick and mortar and they want to do this. And then all of a sudden the overhead becomes too much and yeah. they end up losing their business. Like short term, our goal right now is to get our own space where we can run the trucks out of because right now we run out of a shared commercial space yeah. uh in Nashville called uh well citizens <clears throat> but eventually we'd like our own space where we can have a maybe a little storefront that we can sell out of as well but then also manufacture all the cobblers and it's just our our own space because that's 
that's the it's the growing pain. Right yeah, now. that's the challenges right now. We have some things that we could do to grow, but we're limited because we don't have space. Um, so I definitely think that is short term. And then I don't know about long term. Honestly, like I think we're we're kind of just taking it day by day. We don't have kids right now. Um, so that's been, you know, made life easier for us to do a lot of the things with the trucks that I know that we probably wouldn't be able to do if we did have a, a family like that. Um, and so if that changes, you know, any time in the future, then that might change our goals and vision for it. So we're just kind of taking it day by day and seeing how we feel and what we want to do with it. I love it. Uh, thank you guys again. Can you tell us one more time where we can find you online? Yeah, so you can find us at tncobblerco.com. That's T-N-C-O-B-B-L-E-R-C-O.com. Or Instagram at tncobblerco and Facebook backslash tncobblerco. What are your guys' favorite cobblers? Pineapple. Yeah, I like the uh, strawberry is probably my favorite. Yeah, I like the pineapple. (laughs) That's awesome. So it's not always just the same ones everyone else likes. No, I'm constantly pushing yeah. pineapple on people. If we have pineapple on the truck, I'm like, but can you just try it for me? Like, I just want you to try it. <laughs> um, and then usually people love it. They're just scared of it. You know, when you hear cobbler, people think peach or blackberry, um, blueberry, like all those basics. And so it, that has been interesting to teach people that, no, there's a million different opportunity, you know, flavor profiles that you can do with cobbler. And, and they're, so, you know, they're surprised, but they're, they love it once they try it. So I've made a few fans of the pineapple cobbler. <laughs> That's awesome. I like pineapple as well. I like all types of cobbler. I'm like a huge pie person, even though I guess I sh- it's not technically the same in some ways. But I like um, I like cobbler. I like pie. I like any of that type of stuff. So I'm going to have to try your stuff when I'm back in Nashville for sure. You um, come see her. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to see the location because I think I know where it is, but I'm not quite sure. So it'll be interesting to see the food truck because there's a lot of places that are doing like permanent food trucks at their their spots to attract attention, revenue, stuff like that. And why yeah. not in Nashville? There's no food like there's not enough food on the go, I would say, for all the 21 million tourists coming there this year. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, there's no shortage for sure. So there's there's always room for more food. <laughs> and um, what it, what is the. I would say core value of or leadership quality of the other person, you know, so Jamie, which Craig's Craig's, which Jamie that you look up to, or you think that brings your partnership like strength because you obviously aren't the same. What are, what's the other person's strengths, I guess, or core values that you think that, that allow you guys to be successful? Craig is a doer. So he, he, does all the mechanic stuff he can on the truck. He drives the trucks. Um, he, you know, gets the insurance stuff for the trucks. Like, so he handles a lot of the hard, hard working stuff on the trucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jamie's like the, she does a lot of the, the behind the scenes stuff, I would say, like coordinating with the event planners and emails and, um, I guess just all the behind the scenes stuff. I'm usually on the truck all the time. Like I yeah. drive the truck. I'm on the food truck. I'm the creative <laughs> and Craig is like, he's the doer. He definitely. I'm the worker bee. <laughs> <laughs> she's the queen bee. Yeah. That, that makes sense. I like it. I like it. Um, but, but you do. I do admire that in you though. Like I, I mean, a lot of things would not get done if Craig didn't do them. Um, <laughs> I will fully admit that. Like there are times when I'm just, I'm tired. I can't. And he's like, we have to do it. I'll just go do it. And he'll knock it out. So, um, I definitely couldn't do it without him. That's for sure. Couldn't do it without her. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys coming on the show. I appreciate you guys reaching out to be on the show. That was kind of cool. And, um, and your friends out there and things like that. Um, also, uh, geez, I, your story is incredible. I wish you guys good luck. I'm definitely rooting for you guys. I love how you've slowly built your business. I love how you guys communicate. Um, and I love how you've been able to do something that's sort of unusual. There's a lot of other things going on, a lot of burgers, a lot of ghost concepts, a lot of all these like things, but you found a special place, something that I would call unique, uh, yet familiar. And, 
you've been able to do very well at it and add your own twist to it. So that's very cool. And um, everyone in the audience, thank you guys for listening in. I appreciate you guys. If you want to find us, you can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. You can also find us on Instagram at Justin the Food Entrepreneurs. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. And if you like this episode, you're fans of the Tennessee Cobbler Company, just give it a five-star review. The episode, you can give them a shout-out and share it. That helps it get heard by more people. And the more people that hear their story, obviously, the better off you do because we are the brand these days. That's the way it works. And um, you guys are definitely the brand, and I appreciate you guys coming on the show and taking your time again. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you, guys. And we're out.